Okay, welcome back everyone. In this video we're going to be looking at a two-dimensional example of Newton's second law. So the problem that we're looking at is number 66 on page 135. So if you want to pause and look at that, um, we'll go ahead and draw the problem first. So you have a boy with, who pulls a box of mass 30 kilograms with a force of 25 newtons in the direction shown. So he's pulling with 25 newtons and we are given this angle of 30 degrees. So in part A they say, ignoring friction, what is the acceleration of the box? And we haven't talked about friction yet, so we'll go with this. Okay, so the first step in solving any Newton's Law problem is drawing and identifying all of the forces. So in this problem, we've got the box, and the 25 Newtons is the force of the pull. And aside from the force of the pull, we're going to have the force of gravity going straight down, which is equal to mg, mass times gravity, and we're also going to have the normal force going straight up. And a lot of the time we tend to think that if I have a box sitting on a ground, on the ground, then the force of gravity is going to be equal to the normal force. And a lot of the time this is true. So a lot of the time that can be the case. But if we start to pull up, if we apply an upwards force on an object, does the normal force have to be as great in order to balance out gravity? Because let's think about it. The box is going to be moving along the ground. So the box is not accelerating up or down. So we could actually write that AX is equal to zero. Oh, sorry. Okay, so it's not accelerating up or down. That would be the y direction, right? Okay, so it's not accelerating up or down. It is going to be accelerating horizontally, and that's what we're actually trying to find. So now that we have all of the forces identified, we have to come up with some sort of an ac axis. And why not just say that upwards is positive, and so is to the right? last thing that we have to do is take our pole of 25 newtons and divide that into components. So let's just call this FP. Okay, This is going to be FP in the X direction and FP in the Y direction. And guess what? This is no different from when we had velocities last chapter and we divided those into X and Y components. We're doing the same thing with forces. Velocity is a vector, so is force. So this time I'll write it out, but in the future you're just going to need to go here directly. So the pole in the x direction is the pole times the cosine of 30 degrees, or 25 cosine of 30. I think that's root 3 over 2 if you know those special angles. but otherwise that turns out to be about 21.7 and the force of the pole in the y direction is f pole times the sine of 30 degrees and that's going to be 25 sine of 30 degrees and that turns out to be 12.5 newtons okay now those are both positive why because the x is going to the right and the y is going up. Okay, so now this is where we apply Newton's second law. So Newton's second law says that the net force is equal to mass times acceleration. But here's where things are different. If we've got two dimensions, then we're going to apply Newton's second law twice. 
and what we're going to do is we're going to do it once for the net force in the x direction which will give us x acceleration and we're going to do it again for the net force in the y direction. Okay now for this problem all we're trying to figure out in part A is we're trying to figure out AX, the acceleration in the X direction. And it looks to me like the only object that we have, or the only force that we have, is simply F pole X. Okay, so F pole in the X direction is the net force because it is the sum of all of the forces. So that's going to be mass times acceleration, or 21.7 newtons is equal to, what do we say the box was? 30 kilograms times AX. And then if we solve that for AX, we're going to get about 0.72 meters per second squared. And that's a positive number because we had a positive value for the net force because it was pulling to the right. We said that to the right was positive. Okay, so that's our answer to part A. Part B, however, says what is the normal force exerted on the box by the ground? So now we want to go back to our diagram and we're being asked to find the normal force. Okay, so the temptation is to say that the normal force is equal to the force of gravity because of the diagram I've drawn here on the right. Normal force is up, gravity is down, they've got to be equal, right? No. And the reason that that's not true is because we're pulling up and to the right, and the upwards part of that pull, in other words, FPY, is actually lessening the normal force. Think about it this way. If I pulled with more and more force, if that pull wasn't 25 newtons, but if it was double that, if it was, let's say, 50 newtons, well then the upwards pull would be 25. Okay? Well, let's say if I kept going. Let's say that I was really, really strong and pulled it with a thousand newtons. My upwards pull would be 500. Now what's the force of gravity? Well the force of gravity is the mass of the box, so 30 kilograms times gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared, and the force of gravity, uh, let's try some math here, 30 times 9.8 is 294 newtons. And if I'm pulling up with 500 newtons, and if uh, the weight of the box is 294, I'm going to lift it into the air. So the, the thing I'm trying to get at here is that the normal force in this case actually uh, lessens the amount, or sorry, the, uh, the upwards pull is going to lessen the normal force. Okay, so back to our actual scenario. We're going to try to solve for the net force in the y direction, and my two forces are the normal force and F pole in the y direction. That's going to be equal to the mass of the box times the acceleration in the y direction. Okay, now go ahead and look at this and see if you can figure out what I'm forgetting. Okay, I need to put in gravity. So the two forces that I've written are upwards, but then I also have the force of gravity, which is downwards. So I'm going to put a negative sign on that. Okay, so we have the normal force plus F pole in the y direction minus the force of gravity is equal to, well, let's think about this. Okay. If the box is not lifting off the ground, if it's just sliding forwards, then, as we said earlier, AY is zero. And so the net force is equal to zero. Okay, 
So now what I can do is if I want to solve for the normal force, that would be equal to the force of gravity minus the force of the pull in the y direction. Notice how I'm trying to uh, be very careful to do algebra before I plug in numbers. So that means that the normal force is equal to the force of gravity, which we said was 294, because that's 30 times 9.8, minus F pull in the y direction, which is 12.5, and that gives us a normal force of uh, 281.5, but we're going to round that to two sig figs, so 280 newtons, and that's positive. Okay, so it's very important that you understand that the, the key to this problem is right here. Figuring out what the forces are and writing F equals MA twice. That's the essential part of this problem along with drawing an accurate picture of what the forces are doing. We will continue to practice this um, lots, so you haven't seen the end of this.